What you got, brother? Yes, yes, you all. It's time for me to start yammering on about my first ever auto assembly. It's so, it goes without saying, this video is probably going to be quite long and longer than I want it to be, blah, blah, blah. I'd really like to just talk about everything I've got, because I've got quite a bit for like just five seconds a piece, but it's not really doing anything justice. And then there's just all the other stuff to talk about as well, and it's just, just a massive, all encompassing experience of video, I hope this is going to be. But first, housekeeping. It's time for me to get a few bits out of the way that I got sort of before AA. I got quite a bit just on the sort of day or two before actually leaving for Birmingham. Um, and then during the week itself, I got something else. Let's just elaborate on that now and get it all out of the way so I don't have to do another tweet at another point. I've got Rhinox. Um, yeah, he's really nice. He's a Rhino man. The Rhino mode is like really good. All the sort of leathery high detailing that he's got and it's yeah, perfect looking Rhino. His robot mode's really good as well, but it's got floppy legs. I like properly badly oh dear this is bad i mean the knee i can't really do anything with that because that's a pin joint and that's just flopping about all over the place and then the hip it's some of those mushroom peg joints so i could tighten that up but oh it's, it's this shouldn't happen to a brand new figure what is going on here yes this guy came to me from brentosaur along with a couple of those creons that you might have seen in that little build video i did recently um yeah i, I mean when i worked out how much it would cost in pounds i couldn't say no because the price i paid for this is astronomically good and i can sort of you know let him off from having floppy legs really this is really nice um yeah so his chain guns haven't got any paint on them but they spin and they're like the perfect things and his, oh, his robot mode is so perfect isn't it Just look at all the gold his face is great yeah rhinox is good um, but he does have a couple of sort of gripey things I, I don't really like, like his shoulders here. They go outwards and they go upwards, but they don't go upwards and outwards. Once again, another figure succumbs to this kind of shoulder arrangement from the new design team. It's like, you just need to learn that this joint needs to be on the other side of this joint. So you can have that go up and just have it proper range of movement, not like one or the other and not both. Doesn't feel right, man. Just needs to be thought about a bit more, you know? And then we come on to the things which I actually got as I sort of went down to go to AA. Because on the Thursday I left, went down to Bristol to stay a night in my new uni room and at the same time have a trip to Toys R Us. And in a sort of what I sort of looked at as a bit of pre-drinking before the party that was auto assembly, I got myself that Toys R Us Grimlock set with two Grimlocks and I really like it. Yes, so it meant I had 40 quid less to spend in the dealer rooms in AA, but I did really want this and they had it there for 50, so I just felt like, you know, it's probably a good move. Thought I went and got it from Toys R Us beforehand for a bit cheaper, because I did really want this set. This Grimlock, that you might all be sort of shaking your heads and going, oh, that's terrible. Um, I've wanted it just sort of ever. I, I mean, I know the Andron Dinobots weren't very good and the whole combining thing is a bit stupid and yeah, this guy still has the combiner head and it's painted and it's like, well, they're not going to do swoop to go with him so what's the point of that? But I suppose if you have the old swoop you could stick this on as an upper torso, I, I don't know. As a little standalone G1-ish Grimlock, this guy's good, he is. He looks properly G1, but he's all nice, sort of solid Energon plastic, and oh, he just feels good, man. He's got some ratchets here and there, and he transforms, as far as I can tell, pretty much exactly the same as the old G1 one. Um, but then I suppose that is why he was a good candidate for the 1984 Grimlock in this set, even though Grimlock came out in 85, didn't he? Uh, but yeah, I really like him. It's just, I do, I really like him, he's nice, he's poseable, he's clickety, his dinosaur mode isn't too abhorrent, um, and he comes with a nice big red sword, and you know, the original one didn't come with anything weapon wise, and I don't think it could even hold 5 mil weapons, so this is a great improvement, just for playability straight away, so yeah, he's good, I like this, really like this. 
As for the movie Grimlock, you get in that box, I like him too. Um, I was sort of just completely happy to have this be the movie Grimlock again because I think I prefer this deco over the normal one. He's got a lot more black and a lot more grey on him and I think it just works. I really like the black against the silver on his chest. It just looks nice and he's got more sort of black and silver on his face and more black and silver around his dino eyes and it just makes him look a little bit better. A little less completely bronze colour because of course he isn't that colour in the movie but I don't want a completely black one. So yeah, I like this. Um, he is a properly nice figure actually. I wasn't really all that entirely bothered about snapping up Grimlock straight away as soon as the Age of Extinction figures came out, but having him, he is really nice. He's just tall and long, he's got massive legs and big pointy feet, and after watching Stu's review, I cannot see this stupid mace thing as anything other than just a big long fork, so it's going to live in my cutlery drawer. <laughs> Yes, his dino mode is a bit of an odd shape, uh, but at least it does the sort of ha ha he man snapping jaw thing, so it's fun, I like him, he's shiny, he's nice. Woo, Grimlock set's really good, I would recommend it. And then we've got a couple of bits which I bought off my mate John, because I went down to Bristol to our new uni house, and we just sort of went through loads of his stuff that he was going to be putting on the AA fan sales table, and I managed to snap up a couple of bits from him before they went to market, as it were. First and foremost of those would be something I've wanted for a very long time. Cybertron Minosaur! Ooh! I remember seeing the picture of this in the Argos book in like 2006 and just thinking, man, what is this thing? It looks amazing. I've got to have one of those. Never got it. So I've sort of wanted it forever and to have it is so good. It's massive. And... Clicks everywhere. It's ratcheted ankles, man. Ratcheted ankles. What? I've got his planet key as well, but he's one of those ones where all the key does is activate some sounds, so I'm really not bothered about that. Could put some batteries in and see what they do, but I don't really care. He's got a mini con that gives him this weird spinning drill action, which looks properly brutal. And a mini con himself is prop tiny and I think wins the award for smallest moving head on any tiny little figure like this because it's, that's just minuscule you have to flip his head up and it's like two mil by two mil no probably less than that that's tiny and then you can go and open up his chest and stick him inside like he's some sort of pilot or I don't know like some sort of sound wave storage thing or it's a little cockpit that you can look out from. That's just cool. I really, really like this. It's just a really good, sort of perfectly quintessential, sort of mid 2000s Cybertronish design. It just looks really cool and really properly good, sort of anime influenced big old mecha thing. And yeah, man, I'm so glad to have this. And the light piping on it is. Oh, it's so good. Yep, win, win, win. And then another thing which I didn't particularly want and haven't really particularly wanted ever, but as soon as I sort of saw it and fiddled about with him, I had to come away with Transmetal 2 Spittle because look at him. I just, I've not seen such a characterful robot mode in a very long time. He's just all hunched over and he's, he's just open palms. It's like he's always like, like that. It's so funny. It just made me laugh as soon as I transformed this. And he's just crazy you know he's got massive shoulder pads all this green chrome for some reason he's got a claw that comes out of here what's that for and then he's got a mace which is his tongue and this is a crazy 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 thing and i quite love it and i think it's mainly just because of the fact that his head doesn't stick up from a neck normally it sticks out of his chest so he's all sort of just bleh like some sort of malformed sort of Igor of the Transforms world and yeah he's great. So that was all my sort of pre-AA, preemptive buying and spending and sort of you know getting stuff I didn't really need to get but at the same time I'm very happy to have. Now it's time to delve into the meat and potatoes song. 
Ooh, are you ready? So here is everything that I got in the AA dealer room. Um, didn't get there quite as early as we planned, and if got there early, there would have been loads more that I probably would have wanted. But even so, it's just mind blowing. Just walking in there, wall to wall, floor to chest height, box everywhere. I really didn't know where to start, you know, rifling through boxes or squinting over at shelves and everything like that. But the first thing that I picked up was uh, quite a sort of, well, let's put it this way, one of the most expensive things that I got. Um, also a bit of a sort of unexpected thing. Uh, I've got a Masterpiece G2 Sideswipe. Yes. Um, and I was a bit cheeky with it because uh, Andy at Kapow let me have him for 40 quid. Yep, um, bargain, bargain, bargain. Uh, this thing, man, is amazing. It is just, wow, I can see why people really like this mould. Um, I mean, to me, though, this version is probably where it's at because it's a masterpiece that isn't a G1 guy and I do have a soft spot for G2 and this thing's insane with his maximum gurn face. Painted teeth, what? Spiky wheel shoulders, he's got those giant... Bowie knife and these silly, stupidly 90s comic guns, and it all sticks together and sticks on the top of his car mode. And it's just, ah, this thing is great, and I really don't know what to do about the stickers. Mm, it's like, it's really good that he comes with all the stickers to make him look like the old G2 Sideswipe. Um, and I did see a proper original G2 Sideswipe there and thought, oh, should I get him as well? But it's like, nah, I've got the Masterpiece, I don't need the old one. Even though it did feel like it weighed as much as this with the amount of die cast that was in it. But yeah, this is something else. The car mode is so, oh, God, it's hot. It's slick black Lamborghini. And that is what makes me think, do I want to put the stickers on it? I mean, I might put one on there, just the G2 symbol on his chest, but... I don't want to break up that slick black. It's so glossy and oh, it's sexy and good. And it's only my second masterpiece, and it's my first Takara masterpiece, and it is just a proper masterpiece. It's really proper nice. And so, yep, glad to have it. Next, we have a couple of proper G2 figures. Well, I know one of them's one of them, not G2 really. It's G1.5. I do have a proper soft spot for G1.5 now. I did pick up a couple of bits from that era, and it's like, yeah, that's where it's at. I've got a Scorch, um, yep, one of them Turbo Master guys, one of two that I managed to pick up. Uh, he's just yellow and fat and he's got flames on him and his face looks a bit like Armada Red Alert and I don't know, there's something about this design that I just, I saw him and just thought, right, I've got to have him, he's only three quid, but at the same time he's like the only purchase I made which I probably just could have left. Um, he hasn't got his gun. Um, but he doesn't suffer from not having his gun because he doesn't make like an integral part of his vehicle mode so he's like, oh, I don't really mind that he's not got his gun but he just looks silly I can't look at this and not just sort of think he looks really weird because he's really fat he's got massive feet big old ears, he just looks like a circus clown some sort of overweight middle aged bloke in a clown costume just sort of like, oh this is how I pay the bills going to children's parties, blowing up balloons not having fun I, I don't know uh, there are things I do quite sort of like about him. I mean, the light pipe, of course, is excellent. And I really like the fact that you just look at him and think, yeah, he could really do a really good update with this, with the new Trail Breaker mould. It's just, it's all there. You know, the way his chest is made, even like some of the detailing on his arms makes me think of that. It, it is just, yeah, give me the classic Trail Breaker in these colours, call it Scorch, I will buy it, because th th that's just... Come on, that's a no-brainer of a repaint right there. You don't even need to change his head. He's got a visor. I mean, yeah, maybe it could remold it a bit so it gives him the big ears. But I don't mind. I would buy a yellow trail breaker. Um, but Scorch, yeah, he's he's sort of okay. I don't know. I'm kind of happy to have him, but at the same time, it's like he's the only purchase that is kind of forgettable. But I did buy him along with something a bit more nice. G2 Hero Optimus. It's not Sure Shot because it says Optimus Prime on his tits. Yep, it's Optimus Prime with the weird sort of stripy white legs and I don't know, I like it, it's another proper 90s thing. I was only one when this came out and he's really actually rather dusty. Um, it looked like he had just been set on a shelf for 20 years 
um, but I've given him a bit of a clean up. He is missing one of his giant foamy missiles, but I couldn't really care because you know you can only actually put one of them on the thing at a time, so I couldn't care less. Although I did misjudge the power that this sort of air bellows mechanism has, because it was like Saturday night maybe, Saturday or Saturday, I can't remember. Back at the hotel, because we couldn't get a room at the Hilton, back at the little hotel that we managed to get that was ages away from anywhere near the NEC, um, me and John were just mucking about with all our bots and I just hit the bellows on this and shot the rocket straight at his face and was sat there just laughing, laughing, laughing because I did not expect this to have that much power. I could have taken his eye out, but it was still really funny. Yeah, I like this. He's all clickety and boxy and he's actually really quite poseable. And he's got good light piping and he's just a sort of different looking Optimus. And yeah, nice slice of G2 right here. And then as another air bellows type bot, I mean, it's like the only other one really, isn't it? Um, I got the Megatron mold as Destructicon Bludgeon from R.I.D. I remember seeing this guy in Toys R Us back in like 2003 or whenever it was, and the Scourge one as well. I'm thinking, wow, what are they? They look quite cool. They're a bit more expensive, but I could tell that they were like probably big deluxes. I've been sort of looking at this guy on eBay, you know, here and there over the years, but to find one for, I think this guy was, I can't remember actually how much this guy was. Um, yeah, it's probably best I forget how much most of the stuff was. Um, but yeah, I got him and he was complete, had his instructions, he's got both his giant missile and his gun. He's in perfect nick. I just really like him. It's just something about like these two squishy air shooty guys. They just feel big and they're poseable. Just fun, yeah. It's nice he's a nice sort of obscure one as well. Obscurity is the sort of watchword of my haul, I think. Um, because I'm sort of losing track of what order I bought things in. But let's go with this guy next. It's another Turbo Master. It's Boss. Yes. Oh, I basically only bought this because of Dorian's video that he did of this guy. I don't regret it. I mean, it was a bit expensive. It was 15 quid for this little guy. But, oh, he's nice. He's got his gun. I don't care about him not having any missiles. He's in good nick. He's got all his stickers. Light pipe in his. Oh, yes. I think that's might be why I like Turbo Masters so much. They just all have really nice light piping. They do have really nice designs as well. He looks really unique. He is properly just, I can see exactly where that G1 drift sort of idea theme comes from. Because all you have to do to make him even more like drift, I mean, he's got the shoulders, you can turn his chest round and then that's like the window's the right way up. And then you could turn his waist round and he's got the spoilers on the backs of his legs. This is, it's just, I would love to see this in white because it is just a G1 drift. Um, but he does look so cool, just as he is. I love the colours. Just the blue and this sort of translucent pinkish colour. He just looks so cool. It's like Rotorstorm as a car, I guess. Yeah, boss is just bossly. Really nice, unique bot. And looking at, like, the old Dreamwave profile art of him just made him look so really cool. I would just love a classics version of this. Yeah, I do like these Turbo Masters. I did see the other two there, Flash and what was the other one? hurricane but they were proper expensive the guy wanted 25 quid for each of them so i was like no i'd love a flash but not for 25 quid mate jog on uh, then we got transmetal waspinator um when i saw this i just thought i've got to get him um, he's only eight quid he's complete has his instructions all of his chrome is perfect um but he does get on my nerves because there's so many joints in his torso and just nothing clips in and the instructions are no help and he's a bit of a pain to transform to be honest um but at least you know he has got one of the more coherent looking vehicle modes because he actually looks like a jet and i like the way that the wasp mandibles pinch like that and he's actually sort of got light piping he just looks cool it's just nice to have another waspinator and to sort of finally have like the only other waspinator that i haven't got so yeah i, I had to pick him up and he's nice um but yeah, he does get on my nerves a bit. Uh, then we got the only Generations figure that I got like, from the whole massive selection I have. Well, not really a massive selection. I wanted to do a bit of a Generations catch-up. I wanted a Hoist. I wanted a Whirl. Didn't see any of them. Didn't really see many of the Age of Extinction ones either. And uh, I'm just assuming that people snapped whatever there was up 
right at like nine o'clock before I got there. Um, but I did get Tancor, and he was only a tenner. I couldn't pass up on that. You know what I mean, I, I was maybe mildly on the fence about getting him. I mean, I know a lot of people have had sort of gripes with him, just sort of thinking, oh, I don't think I really want Tancor. It doesn't look very good. He's too small, blah, blah, blah. I sort of really liked him from the start. And to have him for a tenner, proper deluxe price for a brand new deluxe figure, um, I couldn't say no, and I'm really glad I got him. I mean, yeah, if you're on the fence, jump over it, because this guy's really good. His robot mode is properly fun, really characterful and poseable. He's got pinchy claws and the spinning buzz saws, and I mean, yeah, maybe the light piping might not work. I haven't really got it to properly go, because it's quite thick and relatively opaque, the block in the back of his head. But he looks really good. I love all the blue, it's all slightly shiny, and he's got all the missiles in his chest, and oh, it's, I love the detailing and the proportions. I don't care that he's short, he's got a massive cannon. I, I really, 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 really like him. His alt mode is a bit forgettable. He's just a bit of a square lump of limbs stuck together to make a treaded thing. But he's got no kibble anywhere. It's just a really nice, solid, probably sort of dense feeling little robot mode. He's deep and he's wide and he just feels good. And he's my first ever Viacon. So win, win, win. Yes, he's smaller than Rhinox and that feels a bit weird, but I, I couldn't really care about the scaling. I honestly couldn't. This is my first ever Viacon, so I don't have to compare him to anyone else. And He's just fat tankor, and I, I really, really like him. Then we've got a proper beast of a thing. An Energon figure, which I have just really been wanting for a long time, and when I just saw one that was complete for 20 quid, I just had to have it. This landmine, look at this beast. Ah, oh, it's got his massive claws and the working winch. Um, excellent light piping and massive stature. This is how you do a properly brutal digger thing. I love it. Oh, the massive plow halves of his feet and he's really actually very nicely poseable. And even without all of his brute stuff on, he has a really good looking robot mode. I'm so glad to pick this guy up. And his sounds don't work. I don't know if he needs new batteries or whatever, but I couldn't care because it's just a sound box, and that's not going to really add anything to the massive epicness of this giant, just proper machine of a thing. Yep, win, 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 win. Next up is my first ever Beast Wars Neo figure, and um, for my first ever properly Japanese Beast Wars guy of any description, actually. It's Saberback. Um, yep, I just sort of liked him because he's all got this Aztec motif, and uh, yeah, he's really characterful, but at the same time, pretty weird. Um, his weapon thing, which is just, you know, his tail, and it opens up to make like a plant thing. That's strange, and I don't think I like it, and I have not tried to put this guy into his trap mode. Um, and to be honest, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get into a Stegosaurus. But, yeah, he's nice. I, I just love the sort of Aztec, Native American sort of theme he's got going on here. All the sort of asymmetrical detail on his chest. It's like sort of old Aztec carving. And he's got the skull hanging around there, and the sort of loincloth and the headdress. It's good. But then I have been watching a lot of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, that second series with those Aztec blokes, and it's like, just had to have something that was mildly Aztec themed. Wamoo! Only trouble is, a couple of his sort of back fins have snapped off. Um, one of them just flew across the room. Um, yeah, I've been able to sort of put them back on because it's like part of the C clip has snapped off, but they still sort of fit. But that's a bit of a shame. Um, he is actually a bit broken. But to be honest, I can see how because there's just so many joints going on on this thing and lots of things get in the way when you transform him. So um, I, I can live with it. Um, and yeah, I quite like him, but he's, he's not great. I don't know, he's just a bit weird, a bit too weird for my tastes. But yeah, I like the character that he has. Now we move on to another sort of cybertron -y guy, I suppose. This is a universe guy, really. But uh, another sort of key activated bloke that I've wanted for quite a while. And it is the version that I wanted as well. Um, I didn't notice this guy, actually. John snagged him for me because he knew that I would want him. 
It's Universe Rat Bat. Oh yes. First thing to say though, that uh, I need to give him even more of a dust, but I have given him a bit of a dust. This was the dustiest thing I saw there. It was like all grey on the top. Just run your finger along it and wow, I mean, come on. If you're gonna sell your stuff that's been sat on a shelf, at least give it a bit of a clean. I would. If I've ever sold anything, I've always made sure it's not as dusty as all hell and that was exactly what this was. But whatever, it is really nice. I do like this figure. I mean, the mould just seems to fit perfectly for Rat Bat. Just, it looks like a bat, the sort of spaceshipy thing he turns into, and he's got the sort of, uh, what is it, Ultra Cons symbol when you put the key in and it changes, because where it would have been sideways and it would have gone Autobot to Decepticon, it goes Decepticon to Ultra Con. That's like properly Dreamwave reference there. I mean, I don't think I've ever read any of the issues of War Within where there were Ultra Cons, but just having that in there is great, yep. I do like me a bit of Dreamwave now and then, and yeah. This mould is really good, but having it in purple, shiny purple and gold, man, it's nice. I just, I love the way it all moves. And the light piping, ha 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 ha! Yes, this is just excellent, excellent. But I do need to give him even more of a dust. What should we talk about next? Let's talk about the little Creon that I got. Um, and then here's where we delve into the realm of talking about people that I met while I was at AA. This guy, Joga, comes from the Macula. Um, yep, I, I met him and he said hello and gave me a little sealed blind baggy Creon guy um, as a sort of bit of a thank you because I, I did a little collaborative review for him while I was there. Um, he roped in a few people to talk about that Star Cats not defense or emergency team thing we do that I know nothing about, but still sat there and did a sort of review for one of the bits of. Yeah, that was that was sort of fun. That was quite cool to do. Um, but yeah, he gave me this guy. He's one of the uh, Leo Kaiser blokes, isn't he? Properly weird thing to have as a Creon, and the fact that they didn't bother giving him any semblance of an English name. They just go with the sort of English that Jalgar is sort of turned into when it's said in like, what was it, Super God Master Force, whatever these guys are. Yeah, I, I kind of like this sort of properly Japanese insanity of just him being called Jaruga with an R, not an L. But yeah, he looks quite cool. He tells you a little GP thing. Um, yeah, once again, I'm not really that bothered about Creo, um, but being given this guy's gift is quite cool. Um, so he will stand on my desk next to Demolish and Cup and all those for a little while at least. Uh, more things I was given. I ran into Mr. Dave. Yes. Um, I think, to be honest, what he gave me was a bit of a consolation prize because the glorious Mr. Mentz was going to do me a hot shot out of Generations Blur. And I think he was a bit miffed that he couldn't finish it in time to bring it to me for AA. Um, so he did me a Megatron gun instead. Yes, this is proper nice. Um, he must have had a spare Evasion Optimus gun obviously lying around. He's done the proper gun metal on it and he's done such a good job. But it still probably works as a gun as well. It still fires a missile if you put one in there and all the posts aren't like too thick to fit in things. Yeah, oh, he's done a really good job. I cannot wait to see what my hotshot turns out like. So I know he's done one for Brad as well. But he's going to do sort of slightly different things with the deco on each of ours so we get a bit of a unique thing and oh he was telling me about it and i was like no stop please i want it to be a surprise don't stop teasing me i've got to oh i can't wait to see it I'm just yes but yeah that is just a really nice gun to go with my megatron and i don't have to worry about sort of giving him evasion primes gun and leaving him without a gun so yeah oh, that's nice uh while we're on the theme of things that people gave me dorian when I encountered him on the Saturday as I was trawling through some stuff in the dealer room, just heard my name being bellowed across the room in that thick Glaswegian accent. I just span round and he gave me a massive glass bottle of proper iron brew and that saw me through the weekend very nicely.